David got it, girl. David again brought together all able men of Israel, 30,000. He and all his men went to Bala in Judah to bring from there the ark of God, which, which is called by name. In the name of the Lord Almighty, who is enthroned between the cherubs, cherub, cherub, cherub. yeah, you got it on the ark. They set the ark of God on new a new cart and brought it from the house of yeah, whatever, <laughs> which was on the hill. And the and Ohio, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> the sons of. Abinadab were guiding the new cart with the ark of God on it. No, did I hear that? You're good. You're good. You're good. And Ohio was walking in front of it. David and all of, it, and all of Israel were celebrating with all their might before the Lord in castments, harps, lyres, lyres. Timbrels, cisterns, and symbols. When they came, <laughs> when they came to the threshing floor of Nathan, as as reached reached out and took hold of the ark of God, because the oxen stumbled, the Lord's anger burned against Azaha because of his irreverent act. Therefore, God struck him down, and he died there. The side of the ark of God. Then David was angry because the Lord's wrath had broken out against Azaha, and to this day that place is called Peter Perez Azaha. David was afraid of the Lord that day and said, How can the ark of the Lord ever come to me? He was not willing to take the ark of the Lord to be with him in the city of David. Instead, he took it to the house of in Gibby, um, the ark of the Lord remained in the house for three months, and the Lord blessed him in the entire household. <laughs> that, was, that was a nice job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Lord has blessed the household and everything he has because of the ark of God. So David went to bring up the ark of God from the house of Obi. Um, and the city of David with rejoicing. When those were, who were carrying the ark of the Lord had taken six steps, he sacrificed a bull and a fat calf. Wearing a linen uh, ephod, David, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might. While he and Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouts and the sound of trumpets. As the ark of the Lord was entering the city of David, Michael, daughter of Saul, watched from a window. No, that's not Michael. That's no, nice. Yeah, no, it is. Michael. It's weird. It's, it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's a woman. It's a woman. And when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. And they brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place outside the tent of the tent that David had pitched for it. And David sacrificed her offerings and fellowship and fellowship offerings before the Lord. After he had finished sacrificing the burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord Almighty. Then he gave a loaf of bread and cake, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisins to each person, the whole crowd of the Israelites, both men and women. And all the people went to their homes. When David returned home to bless his household, Michael, daughter of Saul, came out to meet him and said, How the king of Israel has... Is that disgusting? Distinguished. Distinguished. Did I say disgusted earlier? Himself today, going around half naked in full view of slave girls of his servants, as any vulgar fellow would. David said to Michael, It was before the Lord who chose me rather than your father or anyone from this from his house when he appointed me ruler over the Lord's people, Israel. I will celebrate before the Lord. I will become even more undignified, undignified than this, and I will be humili humiliated in my own eyes. But by these slave girls you spoke of, I will be I will be held in honor. And Michael daughter of Saul had no children. 
So I would like to first talk to Gil because she said she had a viewpoint yesterday and then it changed. So, so we up? discussed this with my parents yesterday. So she had a thought and then things changed. So go ahead. Well, yesterday I thought that what David was doing was inappropriate and that um, he was in the wrong, but I reread it several times and I came to the Here's my take on the story. <clears throat> when they got the ark and God struck down as a whatever his name is, um, I think that caused um, a rift between God and David. David didn't understand that Uzzah was punished for trying to save the ark. And that's why I think he did not want the ark. I don't think he was afraid of the ark. I don't think he was afraid of God. I think he was angry. So he sent the ark there. But then I think through time and seeing God's providence as he blessed the house where it was, David came to realize he was wrong. So he went and got the ark, and his rejoicing, it doesn't say he's naked. He has on a linen ephod. He's dead. He's well, dead. But that's her opinion. That's right. That's her opinion. I mean, she, she, yeah, and she is angry. Really, no, I'm just saying that he's, I think she is. Okay, that's what I think she has right. other issues. She's the daughter of Saul. David was chosen up with her father, and she is David's wife. But he had other wives that he loved more. Bathsheba and Abigail, and I don't know other than that. Those two are mentioned. I think there were other issues there, and I think David was so filled with joy from being reconciled to God that he was just overcome. I mean. I grew up with a southern family, and my grandmother, we went to the African American church. And I mean, those people celebrate. I mean, they praise. When they sing, they stand up, they shake hands. Yeah, but the other congregations or they judge them for that. And they and I think that's what she was doing. She was embarrassed. For David, but David was not embarrassed. He was just, in my opinion, filled with joy that he had been reconciled to okay. the Lord and was and was filled with that. So and I think God agreed with them because I think that's awesome yep. that you got there because we had to take it to a Bible scholar <laughs> and he said, which I'm not I'm not claiming gospel truth or whatever, but like Saul, his daughter, like they had certain expectations of this is how you betray yourself as a king. You betray yourself this way. Whereas David was free for all sure. and abandoned. Have you looked up what a ephod is? Uh, no. It's not even it, like it's a ephod, ephod just it's a stand. But it's, Sorry, I'm looking that up. There's so it's a lot of cloth. Like it's, it's not, a yeah. It says it's a priest's apron. It says because the celebration was national and religious, perhaps he removed his royal clothing as an act as an act of sincerity and humility, and he put on this thing. So, right. like, so he's, well, he's and so, so and so Michael seeing him as you're not pertaining, like you're not acting like a king, and David is, I just love the Lord. I'm going to be whatever, and that's. That's two very hard things. So the, the whole thing is judgment. So let's let's try to take this a little bit practical real quick. How do we feel in the church when we see someone raise their hand or clap? Uh oh. Uh oh. Come on. Well, that doesn't bother me. I know, but like some people get bothered by yeah. that. I know. Sometimes people do start popping though. I look around to look at like the little look ladies like, and like, like mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't like this? And that's what the, the, and, the whole and there, is. Some people that are, but I, I, I 
It's not something you can tell somebody else to do. David could not tell Michael no. to do that. She would have never felt comfortable doing what he did. But does it make you uncomfortable if I raise my hands? Absolutely not. No, it doesn't. It doesn't make me uncomfortable. But have we had so so we've what gone to encounter, and you felt very uncomfortable with the way people were dancing and feeling. So oh, what is it? Church we went to that night. Oh, is it the Second Baptist or where were we? It was back when we were in college. It was on the Thirty Fourth and University. Yeah, so. You I didn't feel like there, there was a late uh, That's where you're the last. There was a late That's right. where Jake got hepatitis. No, no. Thirty fifth no, and thirty fourth. Is a yes. He went to a daycare the, at thirty. The, yes, and, and that's where he got hepatitis. Okay, you bring something. I'm just what struck me is in the it's in the New Testament, and Bill probably can quote it to me. But it, but it talks about where uh, they're eating meat and it offends yes, or not don't, offends. Okay. Don't do it if it offends somebody else. Don't do it if it offends somebody else. But at the same time. I'm just a second. So, so <laughs> if, if. Well, I have a TikTok to show you. So, I mean, that, that's what it says. It says that. Not really. Uh, if you if it offends somebody if you eat meat sacrificed to idols, then don't eat it. Well, it, that's what it says. So what, hey, it, Lloyd. But yeah. She says, like, if you your can't do it, that's what I think. This thing in my house, they're not going to do something to offend them. But if we're out in public, it's a little different to me. Like, if, if, if we're at a public meeting place, I don't know. I don't know. Phil's about to talk, but I also want to contribute to this. But, Phil, go ahead. Well, I, Lloyd's. Lloyd's reference to one of Paul's comments that was Paul talking about, uh, yeah, being being open, uh, flexible. We have freedom in Christ. At the end of the day, we have freedom in Christ. And so that's part of what he was talking about in that reference. And then uh, there's there's also uh, another another excerpt from Paul where he he basically just flat out says, I'll, I'll do whatever I need to do and be whoever I need to be if it opens up the door to allow me to lead someone to the Lord. Now, of course, that's, you know, there's common sense behind that. But really the context with that was they were facing multicultures. And so, you know, the Jews had a lot of history thousands of years of protocols, if that's what we want to call it. And if Paul was in their presence and it was more comfortable to them for him to, to be a part of that, he was willing to do that. If he was with the Gentiles, the Greeks, the more of the Roman culture. And we actually, you know, as shepherds, we have this conversation quite a bit. And really, every time the conversation comes up, where it ends up for us is those of us who are more mature in the Lord are the ones with the opportunity to, um, to not be offended, maybe is, is, is kind of a backwards way of saying to allow for, for someone who uh, just feels led to lift their hands up to the Lord in, in graciousness or appreciation or honor, uh, or who doesn't. You know, or who wants to get on a knee uh, in prayer, or someone who doesn't. So there's um, there's a freedom in the Lord that that those of us who um, have more experiences may maybe. Uh, of course, none of us, right, would say, "Okay, I'm there. I'm the most mature person in the." Uh, in the world or on the planet or whatever. It's not that. Um, and in fact, I do think, Laura, my last thought, Ron, and I'll pass it off to you, that Laura, you touched on something that that I agree with. I, I listened to Sean's little um, video yesterday too. It's where he was. And that is a, a pride versus humility and a jealousy versus gratefulness. And 
if you guys uh, might understand this this kind of way of saying something, David to me was a player's coach. He was a king who was just one of us. And I, I agree with you, Laura. I think Michael grew up in the palace. Her dad was the king. We understand that Saul became very prideful. So we can only imagine how he viewed that position and how he used his position to, to lean on people and, and take advantage of that power. And, uh, and here's David acting like one of us. And I, I think there was a jealousy and, and, uh, versus a humility and, and there's a, uh, certainly a lesson to be learned there. Ron, off to you. Well, actually, I'd like to go back to you as well. You said uh, in your house. So, like, you know, in the house and the church, things like that, I feel like I need to respect everybody. I mean, not that I don't respect everybody, but like, like Jesse said, if you go out in the world today, you're going to do something that's going to offend somebody. And you can't not, you just can't not do that. I'm going to offend somebody by being a Christian. So, if I bring somebody into my house that's an alcoholic, you know, you're an alcoholic. If I bring somebody into my house that thinks, Pigs are unclean. I'm not going to feed a pig. If I, you know, things like that, I definitely think you need to. But like, I'm not going to be respectful. You're not, yeah. not, you're not causing them to stumble. Yes, but if I'm out ordering food and the person at the next table thinks bacon's unclean, I'm not so worthy. Like, I'm not going to not offend them. No, no. Well, I mean, bacon's awesome. I, I like to. I I've, I've enjoyed celebrating when I worship. I have been uncomfortable before. Um, my brother, one of my brother's old churches, I mean, this lady was dancing. Like, you know, it, it, was, you know, it was weird. It was <laughs> not like, not like normal. It was. It, weird. it wasn't just this. It was. Like, it was. Like, you was, stopped and you looked stuff. and you went, huh? So <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, but, but at the same time, but see, uh, that's what I'm saying. I've been uncomfortable. But at the same time, here's the difference. I love my parents. I love you. Is that even our You felt comfortable in the counter. Dad did not. And that's what we're trying to get. And it was was one of the one of the most sincere times. No. So so we've taken my parents to worship. Dad didn't feel comfortable. He was. He was respectful. He didn't say anything. I've never felt more free. And I wish I could do that here. Yeah. Even though Dewey is such a great, I mean, I wish I could show my feelings, but I also look around me and I'm like, no, I can't. No. No, I can't. I'm more concerned about what other people are thinking rather than. Yeah, it's, it's a weird oh, thing story, to navigate. It's not. David didn't care. Yeah. But she not. did not like it, and then she didn't get to have kids. And he's just so joyful that he's been reunited, in my opinion, with the Lord, because they did have a rocky relationship, even though he was well, and this is more, He's reunited and apologetic and reunited and apologetic. And, uh, I've heard it said, he is the best and the worst of humanity. He has a heart after he wants to love God, and he fails multiple times. But he's always apologetic, and God forgives him. And that shows you, I mean, that's... Well, the back end of all this, I agree. Yeah. I mean, and, and Gilda gave me a perspective there that is not written in the scripture. No. But I can't quite get it. I can't I'm quite sorry. get it. I'm not very sorry. But, but you know, what okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what he said. He's a, there he's a touch of the you got that. And dies. And that makes David mad. Well, that's that's what I hear you say. But in just a minute, if it, it wouldn't have said when the Yittite is prospering, now I want the heart. I don't think that's it. I but but why did he say? Why did he say? He did. David now saw that Obed, what's his name? Yeah, yes. Obed. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but, but 
<laughs> but it says that we get that little scripture there, kind of, kind of let it go. But David, I think you're looking at a material part. I think David was looking at it as when 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 he saw him killed by the ark, he saw the ark as um, you know as God's wrath and not something. He was angry. He was angry. scared of it. But then when he saw that, that was not the case, then he wanted it brought back, which is where God wanted it in the first place. But you know, why, is, is, why is that favored over David just having faith that it's good from the start? You know what I mean? I, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. You're saying, oh, wait, it's, it's good. Yeah, he should have won. I mean, if, if so David's the hero of the story, then if you would think that. Well, let, let, let her read what she was wanting, because, and then I also want to talk to about that. It just said David was angry that the well meaning man had been killed, um, that his plan for Joy's return of the ark had been spoiled. He undoubtedly knew that the fault was his own for transporting the ark so carelessly. After cooling down, he then put, he then basically brought it back. So he realized that it was wrong, and then... But the scripture says that yeah. it went over to this guy, and that guy all of a sudden was prospering. And, that's yeah. what and then and he go, hey! Yeah. But that's not how I see. That's how you see it. That's just what the scripture says. <laughs> <laughs> well, who wants to go to lunch with us? Okay, I don't want to. <laughs> like what Laura said, I don't want to ruin anybody's perception of David, but I think before, whatever, even growing up, I, I thought David, oh, David. He could do no wrong. David was not a good guy. That's just when you were. And yeah. When we teach the first. Yeah, no, let's 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 David is the main guy. David is like, and that's why that's why he's considered the best. He's considered the best in world humanity. But, and I think that's why we have a struggle with that sometimes. Like, why did he just automatically? Yeah. We're holding up to the standard. But your dad's argument, I still have a, I still have a hard time. Like, she did. I don't like Micah. But at the same time. I get it. She's My kind of pissed wow. off. Yeah, I, I, and I, 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 and I at the same her. time, David, <laughs> David just it, it seems like he's an opportunist, and I know I'm that he has the favors. <laughs> he's an opportunist. So <laughs> like, like it's not a good thing, and I'm pissed about this, but oh wait, it's a good thing, I'm, and I'm oh, I can that. dance. Like he seems like an opportunist in that. That to me is a personal faith struggle. That I don't think he frustrates me because if he was, I don't think God would have said he's after my own heart. And God did say that. I think. I think he was just. Could you be both? I think he was a few right there. I think. I think, I think, I think his worship up. was an honest and legit. I think he was really because the dude loved God. I think I what think frustrates legit, me is there was wasn't also, a firm understanding of what. God desired of him from the beginning. And he just takes advantage of, I'm sorry. But really, I mean, wasn't he already rich? Yeah. I mean, so. So, so Phil, do you have, do you have thoughts? Do you enjoy this? I do. No, I want it back. Yeah. yeah. That's an opportunist. I see, I see David. Not that I don't want it, but I'm angry, and I the way this whole thing is written is weird because normally in Bible stories, like self-contained Bible stories, it tells a story and it says this is good because of this. And this <laughs> yeah, this is bad. It's just like stop. It's like this, this lady was supposed to be but it seems like you know, no one ever really did anything terrible good or bad. <laughs> good or bad. I agree. With you. All right, sorry, Bill had some thoughts. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, I I do think. First of all, there's a lot to unpack here and a lot that that we can't know. That, that sounds like I'm kind of skirting some things, but there are there are a lot of questions here that, you know, that kind of make us wonder and you think upside down and sideways and how does that work? And but I I'm I would echo what you said, Gilda. I do take the statement 
that David was a man after God's own heart uh, as it is. You know, I just, I take that as it is. And I'm going to go back to kind of being a player's coach or being one of us. I, I think what's in front of us this morning and everything that we have related to David's life, the good and the bad, is an, is, can be, it can be an encouragement to us to know that the Lord understands we have weaknesses. And when David, it may be part of the difference in David's situation, <clears throat> if not in the moment, obviously, the times where he sinned against God, he was penitent. He responded when someone came to him and, and told him straight up what was going on. And so uh, in, in this circumstance or any circumstance where we see David's actions that don't reflect necessarily a, a heart of God, it's almost... Uh, not almost, it is an encouragement to us and an insight to, to God's grace and his mercy and the fact that, that he can use the vulnerabilities in us and the mistakes that we make to be opportunities to, to show his grace and mercy. Very good. Very good. Very good. Sorry, that you wanted to bring it back to the table. Yeah. 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 Yeah.